Hi, I'm Debbie Montgomery Johnson. I am a member of the board of directors of SCARS, the Society of Citizens Against Relationship Scams. And I am a victim advocate coming to you today because I've been where you are. The reason I'm talking to you today is because you may be involved in a relationship scam, an online relationship fraud that you believe to be true. And I say that to you because I've been where you are. 10 years ago, actually 12 years ago now, my husband passed away suddenly. And six months after he died, my friend said, Deb, you need a life. I'd been married almost 26 years and I was comfortable, comfortable, as comfortable as you could be after your husband dies suddenly. I was comfortable being by myself and they said, you need a life. They meant they wanted me to start dating again. They wanted me to get engaged with life again, other than work, 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 because I was working a lot. So my friends got me involved in online dating, which I thought would be safe. Probably you did too, if you're, if you're doing this, or perhaps you were playing a game. Many of the women I work with were involved in words with friends, and they just got involved with someone because they wanted to talk to somebody new. Maybe you've been married a long time. And we've all been there and relationships go up and down. But in my case, I jumped right in, but I started off by dipping my toe in a little bit at a time because I wanted to be safe. I went to a faith-based site thinking that it would be gentlemen that I would meet that are honest, full of integrity, maybe lost a spouse, maybe divorced, but they were going to be kind. And when I got in there, I found out that those weren't the guys that I was seeing. And I, I, I talk about this a lot. Let me tell you that I did write a book in 2016 called The Woman Behind the Smile. And it was triumph over the, the online betra uh, relationship betrayal, romance betrayal. So I, I have experience and I know where you're at. So when I got involved, I was looking for the perfect guy. Now, remember, I'd been married 26 years and I trusted everybody that I met because I'm a trusting person. I'm a very faith-based person. I'm a very giving person. I'm a mom of four, grandmother of four. And so I had no reason to not believe the people that I was talking to, uh, to be transparent, to be honest, because that's the way I was. I put out an honest profile. I made sure that they knew who I was. I've learned a lot since then. In any event, I met a gentleman, a gentleman, international, from London, lost his wife. We started communicating on the, on the dating site. And I had no reason to not believe who he was. It was very kind. He was very well-spoken, uh, international guy, PhD, well-written, well-spoken through writing. And I'll take you back, back in 2010, I didn't text. There was no texting back then. I did try to talk to him a few times, and I did, a couple of times. He had British accent, which was part of the story. He was from London. And he very quickly moved me off of the dating site to Yahoo Chat, which I thought was extraordinary because it was like we were texting. He was in the United States when we first started to chat. He got a job overseas, took him to Malaysia over, he was moving hardwood trees. Whatever the story is, it doesn't matter because the stories are very similar. And I'm coming to you after 10 years now of working with SCARS, the Society of Citizens Against Relationship Scams, I've heard the stories. So it's the, it's the doctors working with the UN in Syria. It's the oil rig guys. Uh, it's military that are overseas somewhere and can't get, get access to funds to get home. It's the international businessman from London when that was my story. I've heard these stories and I'm coming to you also as a former Air Force officer, a former bank manager, senior bank manager, a paralegal, a business owner. I'm not a stupid person. I'm not a vulnerable. Well, I guess I was a little bit vulnerable. I am not a, what I like to say, a, a bumpkin sitting somewhere. I've had a lot of experience. 
And I look back at, at my situation and over two years, I helped my friend with his business proposition. Now, as a business owner, I realized that sometimes we don't get paid until the job is over with. And that was the story with him. Soon into our online relationship, he asked me to help him out with his business because he was stuck overseas and a lot of things had happened, but he wasn't, he didn't have access to his funds. So I said, Deb, if you could just help me, I promise I will pay you back with interest. So it was more of a business proposition. And the first transaction was through uh, Western Union, which for me, I'd never done that before. Even as a banker, I felt that was a little bit scuzzy is the only word I could think of, but he walked me through it. Okay. He became my family. And this is what I want you to understand. As I talked to, I don't know you in person, but I, I, I've talked to a lot of men and women, mostly women, that we're in a situation that we become this uh, group of, uh, it's a special club. Okay. That's all I can say. It's a special club. And I'm sorry that you're here, but I need you to hear this. If anybody should not have been scammed, taken, whatever, it is me because I had the training. I have the intelligence. I have everything that should have kept me, should have kept me from getting involved, but I have a heart and I love my family and I would do anything for my family. And this, I called him a gentleman uh, before, but this man became my family through constant communication on, on Yahoo chat. We would chat for hours and it didn't, th it didn't dawn on me that maybe this guy's not working, you know, or be in the middle of the night. And that's when I was tired, but I needed someone to talk to. I wanted someone to talk to. And we talked about our children. We talked about how our spouses died. We talked about everything. We built this relationship up. And I trusted everything he said. And when he asked for the money, although I balked, he said, it's just to help me get through to the next situation. And I just said, you know what? I want this relationship to work. I was ready. I was, I was enjoying it. My endorphins were just running. I had such a fun time with it. And I felt like, oh my gosh, this man really is falling in love with me. And even though I'd never met him, never seen him in person, and that's one of my red flags. Now, if you haven't seen him within two weeks in person, then it's a problem. I didn't see him for two years, but he became my life. And even when my children were saying, mom, don't, 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 that part of me that was independent and wanted to be in this relationship told my kids, leave me alone. I'm the adult here. And it separated me from my children. It separated me from my friends. I didn't tell anybody what was going on. And this went on for two years. I was very good at isolating what was happening on my, in my online life from my personal life, my real life, because I wanted it to be true. I wanted him to finish up his job and come back to the States and be here with me. And I trusted what he was saying to me that, you know, one more time, one more time, one more transfer. Uh, but the transfers got to be so big and my safety of financial safety was being threatened. And I got to the point though, where I'd sent so much to him that I felt like I couldn't back out of it, even though my gut was saying, this isn't right. There's something wrong here, but my heart ruled my head and I kept going. I, even the bankers, I mean, I became good friends with the bank managers and everybody knew my story. And when I did get challenged by one bank, I knew enough about the banking system that I left. I went to another bank. So I had the experience that should have, could have, would have protected me if I'd really known what was going on. If I knew then what I knew now, and that's why I'm talking to you today, because I know that these guys, and it's not one man, it is organized crime, and they are trained. Their job is to get money from us. 
And what they, what they, that group did in two years, I lost over a million dollars. I heard, I can hear it. <gasps> I didn't have a million dollars, but I found it because he was my family. Family. I found it. I sold things. I sold retirement accounts. I sold investments. I pawned my, my rings, which I got back. But I know women that have lost their homes, that have taken mortgages out on their homes, that have lost everything and have gotten to the point where, you know, they're broke and broken and they've lost friends and family and some have committed suicide. It is that serious. And is that for that reason, I come to you and say, listen to what I'm saying. I know you don't want to. I know you want to believe that this person is in love with you, that they have your best interest in mind. They don't. What kind of man would you go on a date with that would make you pay for dinner over and over and over? I don't know about you, but wouldn't happen with me. And I've remarried. I've never paid for dinner. Now. But back then, I was so willing to keep the relationship going because I knew in my heart, I felt like I knew, that it was going to be my forever thing. And I ignored the red flags. The, I don't, I can't come online. I can't get on a Zoom call. Well, we didn't have Zoom, but it was Skype. I can't come on Skype. My internet is bad. You know, just one more transfer, Deb. Or I got to know his family, his sister, his son. His attorney, I had two years worth of, of interactions with these people. And I'm a writer. I have 4,000 pages of journal, which could have been evidence. But when this all fell apart, and this is what was I felt a little unusual, is that one day at the end, September 10th, 2012, he came online in our chat and said, how do you feel about forgiveness? Again, Going on the the spiritual nature of our of our relationship over those two years, we had a lot of spiritual conversations. We talked about forgiveness for hours. I talked about forgiveness. I'm thinking, okay, I got to put my money where my mouth is. And we got disconnected. Came back on a few hours later, and we talked about it again. And I finally said, "What have I done?" Let's hear that. What have I done? And he said, "Deb, I have to confess. I have a confession." And it's going to hurt you. And I will tell you here, I had heard those words once before in my marriage. And it just was a gut punch to me to hear it again. And when he came online that day and said, Deb, this has all been a scam. Now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you're lying. And I said, you have to prove to me that this has been a lie. Again, two years. And he said, okay, I'm going to go on Yahoo chat and there's this little camera. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to come on live. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, for two years, I've said, let's communicate in person. Let me see you, you know, live. And he came on live and I'm thinking, I'm going to see this beautiful Brit. And on the camera showed up, popped up a young, dark haired, dark eyed, dark skinned young man from Nigeria. And I just felt like my life ended. And I'm now my intelligence hat kicked in, my, my investigator hat kicked in. I'm like, how can I keep him in, engaged? How can I find out who he is? How can I get my money back? I needed my money back. I have children and grandchildren. And he wanted to keep it going. Now, could this be part of the scam? Absolutely. But I felt for a moment that maybe my goodness had rubbed off and he finally had to confess. But I saw him. Most people are not going to see the people that are scamming them. They just don't. They're cowards. They're overseas and they're working in big groups. They're trained to be good at stealing from you and they have no heart. So listen to me. Look back at your communications. Does he ever call you by his name, by your name? Is it honey, babe, my love, my wife? All these things, they could be running 50 women at the same time, and you think that you're the only one, you're not. They're using you, they're gaslighting you, they're manipulating you. And I know you don't wanna hear that. When the FBI told me that I'd been manipulated, that I was a victim, I'm like, oh no, not me, not me. And I shut down. I stopped talking about what, what happened. 
I fortunately had my mother and dad with me, but unfortunately I got my parents involved. They want you to bring other people in. They want someone else's money too. So you'll ask your friends, you'll ask your family, you'll ask business associates to help you out. I'm glad that I didn't get anybody else to help me out but my parents. And for 10 years, I felt so responsible to my parents financially. I've paid all of their bills. I've done everything I can to make them whole. And I have, but in my heart, it's the one regret that I have that I got my parents involved. And I looked back and said, you know, would I have done it again? It's so easy to get drawn in. They know what to say. They have playbooks. They rehearse it. They know how to groom you to bring you into that spot where you where you will say yes because you are a helper. You have heart. You want to be there for them. You want to maybe rescue them or help their children or their sisters. You get drawn into their story. Don't believe it. Don't send any more money to them. Listen to someone. Get somebody objective to to give you, you know, just some tips and don't deny what's happening. You want to believe it, but I'm telling you, if you've not seen them in person, you'll never see them in person. And you're going to leave this situation broke and broken, blaming yourself, just beating yourself up for being so stupid, for being this and that. You're not. You're intelligent. You're kind. You're easy. You're easy to talk to, you're easy to work with, but watch out because they can fake things. They can fake accounts. They can fake documents. They can fake videos. They can pretend to be talking to you. I was, I, I went very public with my story and I've been on Dr. Oz, Mel Robbins, Tamron Hall. When I was on the Mel Robbins show, there was a young woman there with me and she didn't lose money. But she'd sent hundreds of pictures, compromising pictures of her, of her body. And she felt sure she know, knew who this was, this person was because she had had videos. They had video chats. Well, have you ever heard of artificial intelligence, AI? Have you ever seen the, the videos where... Tom Hanks is talking, but it's someone else's voice or or you think it's Tom Hanks and, and he's saying the thing. I, I don't know. There's just so much out there. They have so much money. Trillions of dollars go across the pond every year because these guys are brilliant at what they do. Again, their job is to get your money, not your heart, your money. And once they get it, they will keep going and they will try to get you involved. They will have you accept money from other people. And then you're complicit now. Now you're part of the scam. Take my word for this from, take my word, okay? Don't get involved. If you are involved, I'm sorry, but stop now. Disengage immediately. Talk to your family if you can. If not, find a trusted contact. Find someone that you can be honest with and then report it. Because if you don't report it, and I think three out of 100 people will report, we have to tell people what's going on here because the scammers are laughing their way to the bank. They know that victims are going to feel like they were ridiculous, that they were stupid, that they you know, were taken. But I'm, I've been there. I blamed myself. I was too smart. I was too vulnerable. I was too ready to believe and trust. And I shouldn't have, but I had no one to tell me that the scammers are out there. I'm telling you today, the scammers are there. They are after everybody and all of us, no matter how smart, how well-financed, how well-educated we are, can and will be taken at some point in our lifetime. Hopefully not to the extent of a million dollars, but a penny is too much. Don't give these guys your time, your heart, your money, because they're taking advantage of you. And I hope that, that this message gets to you before you are broken, broken, because I work with women and all over the world with scars in international 
nonprofit organization that supports victims. We want you to become a survivor, a thriver, an advocate for change. Because without us, the world is never going to hear what these scammers are doing. They're organized criminals, and you've been victim to a crime. There's nothing to be afraid of. You need to go in and report it, and SCARS has an excellent support group and way to, to go in and be prepared. You're not going to get your money back. If you've given money, you will probably not get it back, but you'll get your dignity and your pride and your family and your friends. You'll get them all back, but you start with yourself. Start with getting yourself whole and understanding how this happened, why it happened, where the money went. And that got me mad because the money could go to fund Boko Haram. It could fund terrorism. It could fund whatever. It's not funding my grandchildren's college education. It's not funding my retirement. And for that, I get upset. But I want you to know that SCARS is here for you. Our support group is it's men and women who have been through exactly what you're going through that have recognized that they've been taken advantage of, recognize that they are being scammed, recognize that they are victims of a crime, but the crime and being the victim doesn't define who you are today or tomorrow. It's what you do with what's happened that can change your life. It can change your family's life. It can change someone else's life. And that's why I did it, because when I realized this wasn't about me anymore, that I couldn't take the money with me, but by speaking up, I was speaking to that woman that was sitting in a crowd, nodding her head, saying, I'm not alone anymore. I have someone that can hold my hand and walk me through this. And together, we can make a difference. Together, we can educate law enforcement. Together, we can educate online dating companies. Together, we can educate Facebook. And, and companies that facilitate, you know, the, these kinds of scams, we can work together and be positive in change. But I want you to start today and really look at what's happening. Listen to my words. I funded, I, I started, a, um, founded the Women Behind the Smile when I wrote my book. I partnered with SCARS because I realized I couldn't do it by myself. And in numbers, in, in our group, we can make we can effectuate change internationally, but it starts with us. So I want you to understand that you are not to be ashamed. You are not to be, you know, victimizing yourself by blaming yourself. Family members, we don't need them to blame us because we do enough ourselves. Make yourself aware through our SCARS organization, RomanceScamsNow.com. It's an encyclopedia of anything and everything you ever want to know about why this happened. But understand that it starts with you. Understand that you've got to stop today. Believe me, you're going to be sad. You're going to you're going to feel like your heart's been ripped out. You'll survive. I did. I actually even started dating months later and ended up getting married seven years ago to a very supportive young, a young man, he's a little bit younger than I am, a very supportive man who let me speak, who encouraged me to speak up and talk about what happened because it made me stronger from the inside out. You will recover financially, maybe not where you were, but you know what? You're going to realize that change may be good for you, that sometimes things might happen for a reason. For me, the reason was so I could speak up stand up, speak up. I tell people to beware and be aware and know that this does happen to people every day, every minute of the day around the world. And we want it to stop, but it's going to have to stop with you and me and all of us together. And if you have any questions, reach out to us, reach out to SCARS, reach out to me personally through the woman behind the smile, but just reach out to someone and say, I need your help because we're here to help. And I thank you for listening.